Okay, now we're going to start up our MV8000. Okay, we're processing. And there we go. We've got the Roland logo. Ooh, the animation. Production Studio. Wow. Loading songs. You can see if there's data already in our MV8000, it will load it up. So right now it's loading up a song. It's loading the library next. Now it's loading up the sample or samples. So it's loading them by category. And we're still loading. And we're about done loading. And I think we're almost done. And here we go. Okay, let's check out this MV8000. Caleb, what's this fun about? Well, basically, we've got, you know, all of our functions set all across this thing. There's tons of buttons on here, and, you know, don't let it intimidate you at first, but I'll, I'll show you how to get started. Basically, we're going to start way up here. This is our, our section up here. This is for sort of inputs and outputs. We got our left input and our right input. This adjusts the level when we're recording either from like a microphone or say like our turntable or whatever. We're going to adjust our level here for the left and for the right. So that'll be the in incoming source into our MV8000. Good. And that's actually back here on the analog input phono and mic line. Then we got our phono right here, or our phones. This is for our headphones. Headset, right. And that, that just connects also in the back there. This is our minimum, maximum. Pretty basic. Next over here on our screen, we've got our contrast as usual. This will, uh, as you can see, lighten or darken your screen there. That depends on your viewing angle, actually. If you're sitting low, like down to here somewhere, well, you're going to have a different contrast. If you're looking straight up at it like this way, you're looking dead onto it, you're going to have a different contrast. Definitely. All right, moving over, we have our shutdown button here. This is for shutting down our MV8000, you know, very important, you can't just turn off the power, we'll show you that later. Next we got our master output right here, this is just the master level out of the master output. Pretty basic. Alright, moving on here we have our little section underneath our screen. We have menu, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and exit. Now these buttons, F1 through 5, are going to correspond to whatever is on the screen. So look right above each button whenever you're in a certain in a certain uh, screen and you'll see what function it does. These are extra functions that happen on certain pages. You could be, let's say, in a sequence section, you can do track name or track whatever or media or whatever. These will help you get to other pages that are in that particular section like you just said. Exactly. And now we've got menu. Menu you'll see light up when you're on certain parameters and that means that there's a menu available. Right. So you'll use that accordingly. And then we also have exit. This is when you're within a menu to exit out to the previous one. So that's that right there, our exit button. Got it. All right, next we have our faders here. And these faders correspond to, they, they can basically be assigned to different things. They can be the audio tracks that we record on our MV8000. For volume? Mm-hmm. Or they can actually be our MIDI track volume. For volume MIDI track also. Or MIDI, or MIDI events also, too, maybe? Just volume, got you. Um, all right. Next, we have our... Uh, Mixer? Our, our oh, section. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have our section right here. This section will help you move around the screen on your Roland uh, MV8000. We basically have our, our different main menus that we're going to be dealing with. Like Mixer? Yep, yep. we got Mixer right there. A project. Within project, we have sequence, setup, that's for the song right here, sequence and setup, and then we have sampler below that, instruments, audio phrases. We're going to show you each one of these a little bit later on. We have a signable slider, so we're going to sign stuff to a slider. We have our system, and our disk and USB connection, and also mastering here. Cool. That's right. What's up over here? Alright, now we have our effects section. 
the Cosm right here as you can see you can hit effects and that'll get you into your effects section these three knobs here control various parameters whatever you're on on your screen say it could be um, compression, a attack, uh, decay, um, different parameters that you'll be using on MV8000. Cool. And right below that we have our entire sort of pad section here and all these buttons sort of interrelate to each other and basically if you've used any other drum machine these are, are the pads that trigger our sounds. 4x4 four four, we got 16 pads. 16 pads, that's right. Now up above here right below our knobs we've got three buttons multi-level, right. fixed velocity, and event erase. One, two, three. All right. Multi-level pretty much means when you have a sample selected, you'll hit your sound, hit multi-level, and now you have the sound across every single pad, and it'll be getting louder. So pretty much that's the lowest volume it could be at, a little bit louder, a little bit louder, and the highest volume. Highest volume, line. got it. And so it gives you different ways to make a hi-hat sound more realistic, or, you know, you can try other things. Yep. Next we got fixed velocity. What this means, it's a set velocity, meaning the highest level it can be. And it, it, that means every time you hit the, set, the pad, it's going to be the loudest level. Any pad. Be. Any pad, that's got right. It. And then we have an event erase, which we'll show you in sequencing later. That's cool. to erase different MIDI events. We there's different buttons for like hold. You can hold this down, I guess. This is roll, uh, roll a button, roll a little sample. This is delete, clipboard, quick edit, and pad banks. We'll show these later on anyway. Just to get you familiar right now with the front of our machine. What happens over here? All right, this is our sort of a, a number pad here. And this can be assigned to selecting different numbers, um, different uh, symbols here as you can see. You can go flat, sharp, or you can even use it to name oh, things. Oh, I see, if we're doing like with keys. Yep. And oh, yeah, we, we also use this when, when naming our tracks, naming our samples. You can see there's a JKLMN. Three letters on each like a telephone almost. Yeah, basically. And then we have our shift button allowing us to get different functions, of course. Right. As you can see, it's the white right there, so it's going to refer to our little All right, so white you press letters. shift, it acts as the white letters. If no shift, then the black stuff happens. Exactly. On this keypad section. Yep. And we got our enter to enter in whatever we select. Whatever data. And we can also uh, increase or decrease with the cursor. Yep. This is just our incrementals. And then we have our cursor right here. This allows us to get around all of our menus on our screen here. Oh, up and down. Left and right. Left and right, got yeah. it. And then we have our uh, jog wheel. And this pretty much changes values, whether it be um, if, if you're going to be in mute or solo, or if you're, you're going to raise uh, the, uh, the level or drop the level, you know, just different parameters. You'll be using your data wheel here. Got it. Now here it looks like a regular classic thing on the MPC or my first recorder actually. It's like um, back to the top, a stop, a play, a record, like a transport section. Yep, our, our basic transport. And we have, as you can see, top, stop, play, record. And we can step back and forth when it, within our song. Right. We can jump and we can go to uh, different measures here. So we can jump, to, we can pick where you want to jump to and jump to that part of the song. Got it. Yep. Or well, that's auto punch. And we got a preview and a loop section, I see. Yeah. Loop is great. You can turn it on. You can easily do a quick set, which I believe the default is to two bars. But you can also see that on your main screen. We'll show you that later. It's a great way to get sort of your four-bar loop going yeah. and get your drums in place. And then we have, of course, our BPM tap. Tap it once. You can set your, your tempo for your sequence. Oh, I see. Or do a multi-tap, and your uh, BPMs will change. Got it. Pretty basic. Pretty basic. Okay, cool. I like it. Now up here, I see we got like a disk drive down here. Let me look this up a little bit so I can see it. Well, I can't even see that with the light there, but I got a disk drive right here. How's the button on this thing? Oh, there we go. I got a disk right here. See that? We got a disk, one of our Sound Kings discs. This machine also reads MPC 60 disk, which is amazing. And we also got a little drive here for our CD. It's kind of cool. See our CD right in there? Okay. Let's check out the back of this machine. Sounds great. Okay, we got that sampling? Yep, we got sampling right there. That's to access our sampling mode. We'll show you that on later on. And what about this, uh, that's import? Import, that's how we get samples from our disk drive down here, or our CD drive. So we know. can import samples from the source, and just uh, import it into our MV8000. Yep. What's that V-Link thing for? This thing right here 
is for hooking up to a computer or other device. We'll show you this later on. USB link, right? Yep. Looks like it. And then we also have our undo and redo button. Simple. Great. Undo it or redo it. The way it was done. Great for when you make those little mistakes. So let's get busy. We'll show you the back. Okay, it's the back of our MV8000, obviously. Check it out. This is our phono section. If you got a turntable, you plug them up here. Obviously, RCA. We got a right and a left. And we got a ground. See this little screw here? You can put your little ground thing, a little ground little wire you got with a little shoehorn in of it. Put it here, screw it in, you're good to go. You got me? Otherwise, you're going to hear a loud buzzing sound. Buzz, click, pop, all that crap. Connect your ground. Connect your ground. Next, we got our analog input. Now, both these are analog inputs. This is RCA, not just for phono. This is also quarter inch. This is left and right quarter inch input. It's called tip ring sleeve. That's what it is. You see that? Next, we got our output section. Now, the same thing. Tip ring sleeve. See that there? That's our master tip ring sleeve right there right left next up we have our phono you get your headset you plug it right in there you got me pretty simple we also have a digital right there a digital in that's a see that and we have a foot switch in case you want to do like a stop or start let's say you got like a guitar player uh, he's coming over and he wants to punch in a certain point if you got a foot switch he can hit the foot switch, punch himself into the record, hit the foot switch, punch himself out the record. It's kind of cool if you need a foot switch. Also, have a USB connection for a USB cable, which goes right up in there. Now, down here below these, we have our MIDI input and out. We got one MIDI in, and we got a MIDI out A and a MIDI out B for your MIDI cables. Next, at the very end over there, we have our power. Make sure the proper AC in. Match it to whatever's in your household. Read your manual for that section, please. So then we're going to have a really good power and make the machine last so it won't get damaged. Once you get your power, just turn it on. And we're good to go. I need something to put it to actually do like this shit too. Need an RCA cable to input, don't worry about it. I'm gonna go over here now to the MIDI section. Pan over here with me. Here's my phone in. And now the RC, the uh, digital. All right, next we're going to do some sampling. I'm going to press sampling, the button, which is located to the lower left of our screen. And as you can see, we have three options. Audio phrase, patch, and sample. Alright, our first option here on our sampling screen is audio phrase. Now basically what this is, it will allow us to sample in a, uh, a phrase of audio from our inputs back here and we will be able to either assign it to an audio track or to a pad later on. Next we have patch here. Now this allows us to sample a sound in and assign it directly to a pad. Next we have sample. Now this just lets you take a sample and put it into your memory. We're not going to assign it to anything. And so this is a good way just to, you know, take a few samples and decide what to do with them later on. 
All right, for our purpose today, we're going to use patch. Now we're going to take in a sound and assign it to a pad. Let's get ready to do that. We're going to press F2 for patch. And here we go, we're in our sampling screen. All right, our first window here on our sampling screen is our sample type. We have stereo, and if I turn the jog wheel here, we have mono. All right, basically, mono means we're going to only be taking one side of our input, and stereo means we're going to be taking both sides of our inputs. Next we have start trigger and there's a few options here. We have level, we have pad, play, and that looks like about it. Oh, and also manual. All right. All right, so basically what start trigger does is it tells our sampler when to begin sampling. When it's on manual, it means that when I hit start right down here in the corner which is F5 it's going to start sampling now I can switch it to level now what this says is when this, the incoming audio level passes a certain point the sampler will begin to record next we have level now right here with level you see there's another box right here to the right of it that says level. When I change this number. Alright, next we have level. Now when we have when we select level here, this little box right here to the right of it becomes available. And we can change this number in our little level box here. And as I change it, you can see this little dot right here on our meters is moving up and down. So basically what this level up here means is that when the incoming audio signal passes this little point the sampler will begin to record and that's how you start like an auto trigger. Alright our next option here is pad this means that when I hit start down here, and I'm going to show you guys, I'll hit F5, it says waiting pad to start. Basically that means all I have to do is hit one of our 16 velocity pads down here at the bottom and it will begin recording. It's a good way of sort of punching in a sample if you, know, you want to do it that way. It's up to you. I'm going to hit cancel and our last option is play. This is basically the same as pad, but when we hit start recording here at the bottom, it'll say waiting for play. And that button is the play on your transport. Two different ways of starting your sampler. All right, below our start trigger, we have stop trigger. Now I showed you before in start trigger, we have different ways of starting the sampler. In stop trigger, we basically have different ways of stopping it. We have manual, that would mean that I would just have to hit the stop button once I start recording. We have beat. We can have our sampler play, say, eight beats right over here. This is how we would select it, and then it would stop recording. We can also have time. Basically, we can go over here. This is our time box, and we can set the amount of time for our sampler to record. Pretty basic, pretty simple. All right, next you'll see here we have pre-sample time. And right now it's sort of grayed out. We can't get to it. See, it sort of skips past it. The only way you can do pre-sampling is if you're set to level here. And pre-sampling basically means it's going to start the, the sampler to record a little bit earlier than when we actually set it for our level so that it'll catch all of our transients. Alright, we're going to be using manual. I'm going to go down here, there's three options here. We have auto divide, auto emphasis, and auto normalize. Alright, so basically auto divide is, if we select this on, it's going to divide our sample 
every few seconds and we can set that time there. This is good for say dividing up like a breakbeat loop into separate drum samples. Say you just want to get the kick, snare, and hat. And we'll show you this later on. Next you have auto emphasis. Auto emphasis adds sort of more highs to your sample. Check in the book for a good description of emphasis and see if it's going to be right for your sample. Next we have auto normalize. When this is checked, it's going to take the sample that comes in, see at what, what's the highest peak of your sample and bring that to zero. So basically it's going to take your sample and make it louder than it is if it isn't too loud already. Now, all the way at the bottom of our sampling screen, you can see here it says wave memory, 118 megabytes, remaining 11 minutes, 41 seconds. This tells us how much sample time we have left in our MV8000. Now, at the bottom of our sampling screen, we have a few different options for our F keys. We have sampling for F1, resampling for F2, reset peak for F3, and start for F5. We have nothing for F4, as you can see there. Now, sampling, that's our basic sampler, and we're going to be taking it from our external inputs here on the back. And if you hit resampling, you can see here it changes, the little picture up here, we're actually going to be sampling from the output of our MV8000. So we can sample something that's already in our song. We'll show you this later on. I'll go back to sampling here. And now you also have reset peak. What this does is when you have a peak on your meter here, say it'll be like minus 5 or 0 or eclipse, you can hit reset peak and it'll go back down to 0 to actually be able to see what level you're reading. And we have start here. This starts your recording or starts the uh, trigger, whatever happened, whatever will happen with trigger. And all the way over here we have our start button, which is F5. What start does is if we're in manual, it's going to start recording. If we're in trigger, it'll basically do whatever we have set to trigger. And that's it. That's your start button. Let's actually start sampling. All right, now we're going to actually start sampling. I have a external CD player hooked up to the uh, left and right input on the back of the MV8000. I'm going to hit play on my CD player. And we have a little guitar there. I actually want the next one. That's it right there. So I'm going to pause my CD player here. Go back to the top. I'm going to play it again and set my level. And I'll do this using my input knob on the left of my MV8000. Get a nice even level there. Reset my peak. And we have it right before, before clipping. Alright, go to the top of it, and I will hit start. As it, you can see, it says now sampling. I'll hit stop. Press stop on my CD player, and now we have our sample. Alright, now that we've taken our sample, before we keep it, we have a few options we can do here. We have our start point and our end point so that we can edit exactly what we want from our sample. Why don't we start with that? We have our start point. And I'm going to start turning my jog wheel here. And you can see on the screen our start point begin to move. And I want to get it right up to the beginning of our sample. And now I can play the sample by pressing preview, 
which is located on F4. Turn this up a little bit so you guys can hear and and I got it just about right there on the, on the front. Now I'll go to my endpoint here. And as you can see, once I start to turn this, there goes our endpoint. It starts to move. So I want to loop our sample here. Why don't I play it? And as you can see, it's not playing from the start of the sample. Why is that? I'm hitting preview. Well, it's because we're in endpoint. If I move it back up and now hit preview, it plays from the beginning of our sample. So let's see what we've edited so far. Now, it's not looping quite right. And I can see right here that I need to get rid of just that little bit there at the end. I'm going to move my endpoint and edit it up. All right, I'll preview. Oh, let's go to start point. And now we have a good loop here. Next, what we can do is there's two options to the right of endpoint. We have truncate and normalize. When I select truncate, what it's going to do is take this space of the sample here and this space and get rid of it, which is exactly what I want to do. I don't want to have to take up extra space with, you know, this empty sample data. And I'm going to hit normalize. Normalize will bring my sample up to full volume. And as you can see here at the bottom, we have five different options on our F keys. We have retry, say if you didn't like the sample or you sort of messed up when you're taking it. We have name, we can name our sample. We have chop, which we can chop our sample into different slices, which we'll show you later on. We have preview, as I showed you before, to preview our sound. And we have OK to accept. Now I'm going to hit OK. It processes it. And now we're at our pad selection screen. All right, now we're in our quick assign. This comes up right after we edit our sound. And basically, it allows us to place the sound onto a pad. As you can see here, we have 16 different pads. So yeah, we have 16 pads here. As you can see, if I hit a pad, it changes to whatever pad I have. And right under our assignment, we can see the pad number change. And the one right here, if you can see it's pretty small there, corresponds to what pad bank. Now if I move the cursor down and go to two, this would mean pad bank number two and whatever button I press. You got it? All right, we can also select what patch we're going to save it to. We're gonna use number one for right now, and I'm just going to assign it to our first pad. Also, the uh, MV8000 gives us another option to make a keyboard, and we can actually assign our sample from one note to another and make a key map out of it. It's pretty cool. Here at the bottom of our assign page, we have a few F options. We have For F1, we have name. We can also name again our sample if we want to change it here. We can preview our sample. There's our guitar. And we can set it, which will set my sound, our little guitar here, right to the first pad. Let's do that. I hit set and it brings us right back to the sampling screen to take in our next sample. Good luck guys, have some fun with it. Alright, we're back here at our sequence screen and what we're going to do now is show you how to edit that drum loop we took and then put it into our sequence. So what we're going to first do is go to our sampler section on the front of our MV8000 which is located right to the right of the system button. Now there's two, th two options there, instruments or audio phrases. We're going to select the audio phrase button. The audio phrase button, got it. When I hit that, 
we'll see these sort of 16 little squares here yeah. representing our different audio phrases. And as you can see, we had assigned our drum loop to the first one, right there. That's okay. So we have all 16. If I hit F2 here, we have the list, and this lists them. And within our list, we can change a few parameters there. We can change like the le level. That's the volume level. Yep. We can change our play mode, our velocity, and our group. Good. Now, this is one way of editing it in this screen. I'm going to show you the other screen, which is a little bit easier to use. I'll go back to pad, pad. on F1. I'll hit my sound here, and I'm going to hit edit, which is F5. Select edit there, and now you can see that our drum loop pops up right here as our waveform. We have a few different options on the screen, and why don't we just start with the first? That would be our pad play. Okay, I'll hit the pad. Okay, it's looping. Oh, oh, I see. And when you took your finger off there, the it sound stops. stops. Yeah. Okay. Now, so that basically means when you push the button down and let go, the sound stops. Okay, so it gates it out. Let's do trigger. Wow, you're not even touching the pad now. I'll stop it. Okay, I see. It keeps going. I'll press the pad again and it stops. So it's more like an on-off switch. On-off switch when you trigger the actual sample. Okay. Next we have drum. Wow. Oh, it plays. It just plays as a drum. It'll play the entire sample out one time. One time. From only one hit. So then it ignores this, this loop thing right here. Yep. Where it says loop mode, where it says start to end. Why don't we just use gate for now? I agree. Okay. Let's go down to the uh, loop mode. Now, loop mode, we have two options here. Or actually three. We can turn it off. Well, loop. Okay. We have start and end. It loops. Got it. And what start and end is referring to is the start point, end point, right over here. And as you can see, loop point is grayed out. So now if we turn the jog wheel, we have loop end. What this means is that the sample will begin when you first hit the pad from the start point, and, but once it loops, it's going to begin at the loop point. Oh, I see. So you so can change it. Let's go in here. Let's turn up our loop point to like maybe like halfway through the sample. Oh, it's about. right there. I see you moving it. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's, let's move that up a little bit further even. And I'll press the pad. See how it started from the beginning, but now it's looping from the middle because that is our loop point. Got it. So it starts in the beginning. But when it goes around one time, it starts again from the loop point. Exactly. Got it. What's the next option we got there? Well, let, let me set this back to zero real quick because we just want it to loop all the way around. Well, make sure you set that back in case you guys don't do it. You'll have this funny loop going on. There we go. Now we're back to zero. And we actually just want to do start and end for our loop. Exactly. All right. Next, we got to see how many uh, beats per minute our sample is to figure out the tempo. Now, actually... One, two, three, four. That's the full length of the samples. That's one, two, three, four means one measure. That's four beats, four yep. quarter notes. Yeah, if, if we're recording, if we're referring the quarter notes to the beat. Exactly. And that's what we're doing right here. As you can see, I have selected quarter notes. I can also select a few different options there. There's like sixteenths. Eighth notes, you know, but all different most, ones. The most simplest form is quarter notes. That way you can measure by one, two, three, four. That's like one measure. Yeah. Using the other ones would be if you had a sample that's less than one bar. Exactly. All right. So we're going to say it has, we're using quarter notes, four beats, and as you can see up here, it gave us our tempo. Exactly, which is 96.09. That's right. Got it. Okay, we got a few other parameters here that we can change on our sample. It's our level, huh? Oh, I see. We turn the jog wheel down, the value lowers, and the level actually gets lower. Yep. Got it. What's the next one over there? We have velocity control. So right now, when we hit the pad, it's playing at one solid level. Yeah, I'm tapping it softly. It's still hitting the same level. 
Now if I turn this on, ooh. Oh, I see. I, if I hit hard, it comes on. Hit it soft, it plays soft. Oh, I see. So it's the velocity level controls the amount of volume that comes out of that particular sample. Yep. Got it. All right. We're going to turn that off. We want it to play the same level whenever we hit it. Agreed. All right. Then we got, of course, our coarse tune, fine tune. Oh, let's see that chorus. Oh, yeah. Ooh, rap, 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 wow, that's fast. Yeah, baby. There you go. That's a slow beat beat for me. And we got, of course, the, oh, the fine tuning of the actual pitch. That, nice. That just does a little bit by little bit. Yeah, to help you get the perfect pitch you actually want. What's that, the reverse to? Wow, this is pretty cool. Instantaneous. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hit it. Me okay. and my dogs. I like that. Cool. Now this next function is pretty important. It's called BPM Sync. What this allows you to do is once you record your sample to an audio track, which we're going to show you how to do here in just a minute, when you change the tempo, your sample is actually going to change with your tempo. Oh. Meaning if we're set at, like we have up here, 96.09, and I decide to change that later on to 120 beats per minute, right the drums will still stay in tempo. Mm. It's really cool. What about the buttons here in the bottom? Okay, basically say we have this drum loop on our first pad. Right. If we wanted to change that to a different sample that we mm. have already loaded into right. memory, we can hit F1 for the sample list. And as you can see, those oh. are our different samples there that we've already loaded into our machine. And we can actually pick a different sample to load into our audio phrase. And you, you preview it by pressing F4. Oh, I see. Like some different road sounds we can win there. Let's just keep our drum drums uh, preview. on. Preview. A guy in drums right there. Okay, let's keep it in. How do you keep it? You just hit select, which Got is it. F5. Cool. All right. And next to that, we have length lock. What this does is it puts a lock on your start and your end point so that nobody will change it and it'll change, you know, halfway yeah, through. Yeah, mess your whole track up. Yep. And then we have chop. Now, chop is an advanced function. We'll have to show you another time. Maybe check it out on our next level video. That's on our next level video. All right. And last but not least, we have F5, which is command. I'll press command here, and it gives us four options. We have emphasis, normalize, time stretch, and truncate. Got it. Now, these are your basic functions. You emphasize adds highs. Check, check your book out for more info. Normalize, as we said before, will make your entire sample louder. Time stretch, we can change the timing. Truncate will cut off those extra edges that we don't need if we further edit it. Exactly. All right. So why don't we go back to our sequence edit, and we're going to put this into our sequence. Let's take this drum beat and the guitar we got, and then I'll play some keyboards. Sounds good. Now, remember, if you want to be able to change the tempo later on and have your drums match, this is very important. We need to, first of all, turn our BPM sync on before recording our audio track. Got it. Okay? And we also need to do, what we have to do, is go to sequence and change our tempo right away to... 96.09. Exactly. Because that way we can actually start to change the tempo. It's important because the rolling suggests the way they work the machine. Exactly. Now when we record, we know that we'll have the exact right tempo for our drums. Yeah. Cool. And I changed the tempo actually just by pressing BPM tap next, located next to the transport. And as you can see, I just dialed it in, hit the exit button, and we have our new tempo. Good. Why don't we start up our new hip hop track? Let's start up. Let's get busy. We've got our sample. And remember, it's an audio phrase. Now here we have audio tracks. You can hear your audio phrase on your audio tracks. I'll click onto the sample by pressing this pad number one. And I'm gonna go over here to the cursor and move down to the next available audio track. See that? And you can hear it there also. And I go to this next one here. Now on all four audio tracks, we can still hear this one audio phrase. Now watch. I'm going to go to my MIDI one track. That's the guitar sample we took earlier. 
Now that guitar sample is assigned to a patch. And that's why we hear it. And you see, Doc, that patch is assigned to that MIDI track. Uh -huh. And we showed you that before by hitting track parameter, which is F1. And as you can see, we have initial patch 1. And that's exactly what we assigned our guitar to. That's why we're hearing that. Exactly. So let's close that. And why don't we uh, record our drum loop? Let's do that. I'll move the cursor back up here to audio 1. Next, I'm going to press record here in my transport section on my MV8000. Now we hear that little clip going on there. Check out the monitor here. Now here as you can see, in the first part of the window we have here, it says direct mono. That's our direct input signal. We don't want that. This is the direct stereo. That means we're going to record stereo into our MV8000. We don't want that. We want to record an event. We want to hit a pad and time to the placement we want to place it in this sequence. We do want that. Now, before we do that, Doc, why don't we set our MV8000 to do a quick loop so that we only record two bars and then it loops. Okay, let's make sure the tempo's right. Let's go to BPM. As we can see here, the BPM is the same BPM that we set earlier with our drum loop, which is 96.09 for that audio phrase, the drum loop. Okay, now I want to like exit this tempo. We got the right tempo. That's it right there. I'll press exit. Great. Next, I want to go right down here to my top. I want to go to the top of the sequence. I'll press top right there. Okay, next, I want to press the on for my loop. Now, I'm going to press quick set. Now, quick set allows us to take it from the top and gives us a quick two bar loop phrase. And you can see that right here in the top of our window where it says this little thing right here 0001 slash 1, which is the first measure, first beat, to 003 slash 01, which is where the loop ends. That means to we'll start there and start back in at 1. That's correct, Doc. And now be careful. If you're on bar 2 and you hit quick set for your loop, it's going to actually quick set it from bar 2 to bar 4. Got it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So you always want to be at the top if that's where you're going to be recording from. Exactly. All right. Why don't we uh, record our track? Let's do that. I'll press record. And we're going to record the event just like you said before. Exactly. We're recording the event. And here we go. You see the event. Now I'm going to press play. Now watch what happens when I press play. Listen to the clicks very carefully. I'll press play. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See, we're looping now. You can see here, it's looping to the tempo desired. And it's going past our little playback head right here. And we've made a loop. Also, it's grayed out the area, as you can see right here. And that's how we can tell that we have an event recorded on that track. Which is audio track one. Alright, we showed you before when we set up our audio phrase. I'll go right back to it real quick. I'm going to go back to edit within the audio phrase menu. And we had turned on our BPM sync right there. I'm going to go back to our sequence. Now what this means is because we set it up to our exact tempo which was 9609 and we turned on the auto sync before we recorded the track, now that when I play the track I can bring up my tempo right there just by pressing the BPM slash tap button right. and I'm going to change my tempo using the jog wheel. So we're actually using the jog wheel to create our time stretch. And see now when I change the tempo, the sample changes in time with the tempo. The pitch doesn't change, the pitch remains the same with the sample, but the speed is changing in time to what we set. As you can see it's 120. We can go down too.
That's how it works. Now we're going to assign a patch to our MIDI channels. This is done by going to your MIDI channel. We're going to hit, hit track parameters. And as you can see, we have all of our track parameters, which I showed you earlier. Right. Now I can change my patch on MIDI channel one to whatever patch I want by just turning the dial. We can have up to 16 patches at one time. All right, so I'm going to select our very first patch right here for MIDI channel one, and our initial patch was what we assigned our guitar to. There's our guitar right there. Now I'm going to go up here, I'm going to go to the next MIDI channel, and as you can see, it says Rhodes right here. I had already loaded in a Rhodes. Now you're going to want to know how to also load in a patch from your hard drive. The Roland MV8000 comes with many sounds already included. So let me show you how to load one of those patches real quick. I'm going to hit close here. It's got a drum patch too. Alright, no problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit instruments, which is a button located right to the right of system. And as you can see, we have our patch list. 1 through 16. These are 16 different patches that we can use right now. I'm going to hit menu, which is now highlighted. And as you can see, it gives me four options there. Save patch, load patch, copy patch, initialize patch. Sorry, that's five options. Our fifth option. Delete patch. Exactly. All right. Now, you always have to know where you're at. I'm going to exit there. I want to be on the second one. See how I was on the first? I'm now on number two. And I want to load something in over those roads. I'm going to load in some drums over those real quick. Actually, you know what? Let's keep the roads. Okay, let's keep the roads. Let's load five. All right, let's let's load something on our empty patch. Good idea, Doc. Excellent. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit menu, go down to load patch, hit F5 for select, and then it brings us to our internal hard drive. Now we could also load patches off of other devices, say a floppy disk, CD-ROM, and you can't really load off an audio CD, Not obviously. Really. So we're just going to do it off of our hard disk. Right. We're going to cursor down to patches. Right. And these all come standard with your MV8000. We're going to pick drum kits. Ooh. I'm going to cursor to the right to open that file. And oh, we got a whole bunch of drum kits here. Let's try our Dirty 9. Let's try that. that I'll hit funky. execute by pressing F5. It says processing. Pretty quick. And that's it. Now I'm going to go back by hitting Instruments, which is the button located right next to System. And as you can see, Dirty 9 is now loaded into Patch 5. Cool. I'll go back to the sequencer, go to MIDI Track 1, which is actually Track 5 there, as you can see. Right. I'll press, press Track Parameters, go down here, and now I'm going to change this to 5. To 39, I see. And that's our output sign. And now Ooh. when I hit the pads, we have 39. Great. Okay, let's make up a beat to go with that sample. Okay, before I start recording, I want to press my record button. As you can see here, we have other parameters available for us. Now, when I record on a mini track, we have the overdub available and replace. Now overdub means we can add to the track. Replace means replace what's there and record something totally new. Below there we have our count. You can see it's two measures. We have an auto punch in. It'll start on the first measure, the first B of that measure. And the out will be on the first beat and the first measure. Which means, once loop goes around, we can actually get out. We have also record only. You can hear that metronome click and record only. Or, we can hear it in play and record, or hear it always. For right now, I only want to hear it only in the record. Next, we have our input quantize type. In this case, I want to do a grid and keep my strength strong. That way it falls right on the grid. We're going to set our resolution 
which are quantized grid resolution. This is very important to make sure in case you hit off the actual beat, it'll just put it right where it should be. And we also have our shuffle resolution, which is grayed out right now. You'd actually have to sh switch from grid to shuffle. To shuffle. And now shuffle becomes available. Okay. And it's good to know when you're doing grid, if you need to get different feels, you change this. If you want 16th notes, 32nd notes, 8th notes, whatever. That's how you get it to quantize to those different rates. On that grid. See that? You can change it to the values right next to the actual note number. Now, I'm going to do my record and pull. I'm going to record that click's going by, that metronome's going by. I'm going to make sure I'm in replace. Okay, now we got it going on. I'm going to press my play. One, two, three, four, two, two. Here we go. See? I recorded that right in there. And it stopped recording. Actually, it didn't stop. And the only reason it didn't dock oh. is because we're in overdub mode. I see. Why don't we add a hi-hat on top of that? Let's try that. <laughs> 